They don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about natural rights. They don't care about self-defense. They care about controlling your life and, and, and <clears throat> putting you at risk. They, they don't care if that's what the, the end result is. Hey guys, Steve Gutowski here. Uh, <clears throat> I actually need to clean my carry gun today, so uh, since I already wanted to talk to you about uh, the new um, proposal for concealed carry in, in DC, uh, give you an update um, since you saw the video of me carrying legally in uh, DC on the National Mall by the monument and all that <clears throat> uh, but I also needed to clean, <laughs> clean my gun it's a little dirty so um, I figured I could uh, do both for me I, I first of all I carry a, a Smith & Wesson m and shield uh, and it is loaded right now because I just was out and carrying but even if I thought that it wasn't loaded obviously you always want to treat your firearms as though they are loaded. Any firearm you come uh, into contact with, you should always treat as though it's it's loaded. Um, <clears throat> and when you go to clear, you go to clean your gun, you want to obviously clear it before you point it in any unsafe direction. You always want to keep your firearms pointed in a safe direction, of course, uh, and always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Um, this this is my holster. It's uh, Alien Gear, uh, their level, leather hybrid one. It's like $35. It's so nice. I love this thing. Uh, same goes for the shield. Very affordable. Uh, maybe $550, $600, $600. It feels, with this combination, it feels like I'm carrying nothing at all, basically. So it's, it's a 40 caliber. So it's not like a 22 or, or a, uh, something along those lines. It's, it's real... It's got stopping power, uh, holds about eight rounds, including the one in the chamber. So it's it doesn't have a ton of, of ammunition, but it's, that's because it's a single stack, which makes it a lot more comfortable to carry. But anyway, DC, as you might have already heard, or if you saw in my uh, last gun video, their concealed carry ban, the uh, ban on all carry of all firearms, uh, by civilians is uh, has been declared unconstitutional because well it is very clearly unconstitutional it's the only place left in the entire country that has a ban on on uh, concealed carry or, or open carry uh, any type of carry so a federal court a federal judge ordered them to uh, basically change their law and come up with a new way for people to legally carry guns in DC um, for a brief period, about three days, D.C. was effectively a constitutional carry um, zone where there was no permit process or, or anything like that. And so anyone who could legally own a gun could legally carry it within D.C., which is exactly what I did. Uh, uh, in the video, I'll, I'll put a little link so you can, you can see that. That's probably one of the only people in the last 50 years or so that's carried a gun legally in Washington DC and guess what nobody got hurt there were no uh, <clears throat> murders or shootings related to people legally carrying firearms in DC in that period of time there just was there weren't any after that the the judge agreed for reasons that are beyond me that I think are irresponsible uh, the judge agreed that DC the ruling could be stayed for three months while DC figures out uh, what they're going to do about it um, and so now, this has been maybe a month and a half since the ruling, and it looks like DC has decided what they're going to do about it, and that is to blatantly ignore the ruling and create a just a obviously unconstitutional law that technically allows people to con to conceal carry within within the district. But the the catch is they're doing what's called a May issue. Uh, law, uh, permit process as opposed to a shall issue permit process. Now, a may issue permit process means basically that they don't have to give you a permit. 
then it's completely up to whatever bureaucrat is put in charge of, of issuing permits as to whether or not you get one and you have to justify uh, why you need one. And the reason they've already said publicly, the reason cannot just be that you want to defend yourself or you live in a bad neighborhood or even uh, if you have had death threats against you. It has to be a, a far more specific and serious reason than those. Uh, because there's a great special from John Stossel, John Stossel where he tried to get a permit to carry a gun in, in New York City, which has the same process, one of about, I think, five states that has this process now, uh, which is also being ruled unconstitutional in places like California. So it won't be around forever, but uh, I guess the gun, the gun control people don't care about that. They just want to uh, restrict your rights and, and take away your guns so that they don't really care if it's blatantly unconstitutional. This, this is what they're going to do. But John Stoss will try to get a uh, permit to carry in New York City, which has a similar law to D.C.'s. Actually, uh, a more uh, lenient law than, than D.C.'s. Uh, DC proposal is far stricter than any, of course, any permit process in anywhere in the entire country. Uh, and I'll get into why in a minute. But even though he had several numerous death threats against him, being a public figure and all, most pretty much every public figure has death threats. I've had death threats. Uh, but I'm not even really a public figure. So it didn't matter that Stossel's had death threats against him, uh, had active death threats against him that they He's been in contact with law enforcement and the FBI about them. He was still not approved for a concealed carry license in New York City because basically it's uh, outlawed there by in practice. And that's exactly the, what D.C. is proposing. Um, is essentially outlawed by, technically legal, but outlawed by practice. Uh, outlawed, outlawed in practice, which does more or less go directly against the federal ruling um, and is sure to be declared unconstitutional itself eventually after the goddamn court system gets through with it but in the meantime people like me who work in the stupid city have to carry into the most dangerous place within hundreds of miles of here on a daily basis uh, and we have to go in there and we will have no way of defending ourselves other than just hoping that the criminals uh go go soft on it. like oh, okay that's great. That's that's real great. By the way, I, I use uh, personally. I use hops. Hops number nine. Oops, hops. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's what I've used since I got my first gun, which actually was not that long ago. It was only a few years back, uh, after I was out of college, that I even fired a gun for the first time. So um, it might seem like I've been doing this a long time, but that's not really true. It doesn't take long to get to really get into guns, I think. To really get enamored by shooting the shooting sports, by self defense, by hunting, if that's your thing. I, I personally don't hunt at all. Um, that's not really what I'm into, but yeah, go, you get it, you go out and shoot some skeet the first time, and it can really uh, hook you very fast. It's a lot of fun, it's very addictive, very expensive. Uh, but totally worth it. I'm actually considering moving up or upgrading my, my carry gun to a uh, carry 1911. I think something like a, maybe commander size 1911. That's nice and light. Maybe something from I don't know, Six Sour makes some pretty light 1911s. Let me go with something like that. We'll see. But getting back to the, the, the proposed. DC carry law and why it's actually the worst in the entire country. Uh, well, first of all, like I said, it's it's May issue, meaning that uh, some gun control uh, bureaucrat is going to be in charge of whether or not you can legally defend yourself within the city, which inevitably means you won't be able to. In fact, of the 650,000 people that live in this terrible, awful godforsaken city that I can't stand, uh, in case you didn't notice yet, uh, DC officials predicted that only a couple hundred people will actually be eligible 
for a carry permit. That's right. Uh, out of 650,000 people, only a couple hundred will actually be eligible to, to get a permit. That, they're saying that right off the bat before they ever even pass the law. Like that that's their intention basically is nobody should be allowed to have a gun in DC. Because the gun control in DC that we have now has really prevented all the shootings that go on there on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's really working, guys. You're freaking brilliant. I don't like I actually don't like the spray can. It's my girlfriend's kit. But uh, I prefer the Little bottle you can dip them in. That's just me. That way I don't get them sprayed all over my fingers. But not only will it be a May issue law, uh, it will also have a. It will have moving. It will have mobile gun free zones. A, a thousand me yards or a thousand meters. I forget what it is. Anywhere that's a thousand meters around. A diplomatic official or something along those lines, some sort of government official, will be a gun-free zone. So uh, apparently, uh, gun owners will just have to, if they see a diplomat anywhere with, within uh, distance of them, that they'll have to uh, run away from them. I guess I don't. It's literally insane, and in practice, is is completely unenforceable. And will serve only to ruin people's lives, as DC loves to do, uh, uh, for for just being gun owners. You also won't be able to carry at public demonstrations, which or near public demonstrations, which means in DC, uh, again, a completely impractical standard. That's that that effectively means you'll have to guess at where, when a public demonstration is and where it technically is that you can't carry near it. Uh, which, again, will only serve to put law-abiding citizens in jail and ruin their lives forever, all because they wanted to defend themselves in an insanely dangerous atmosphere. Uh, you know, because uh, that's DC. That's, that's the, tyrann the tyrannical thinking that these t bureaucrats have. Uh, Law-abiding people are what we really need to go after uh, because they might have a scary gun in order to defend themselves. Well, we, uh, you know, the, the gangs and the the criminals are running wild. Uh, there's been 10,000 gunshots in the city over the last 10 years, uh, according to... Uh, they, uh, apparently, they have microphones, all the microphone arrays around the city, and they've been recording to see how many gunshots there are, and there have been 10,000 in the last 10 years, all while guns were, com one, com handguns were completely banned for most of that period, and two, carry has been completely banned for the entirety of that period, except for the three days where I made the video of me carry. So, uh, yeah, your gun control laws aren't working. They never work. They have never worked anywhere. They only serve to punish law-abiding citizens, and do nothing to deter crime. Criminals don't care if there's a roaming gun-free zone following some stupid politician around. They're not going to abide by that. They're criminals. They're already planning to break the law anyway. They probably can't legally own the guns uh, that they'd be carrying regardless. So it doesn't matter. The, making Concealed carry legal, even in constitutional carry, would not allow criminals to carry firearms. It just wouldn't. It would still be illegal for them. And they don't care. They'll do it anyway. That's why there have been 10,000 gunshots in D.C. over the last 10 years. The only people that this law affects are people like me. People who have to go into the city every day for work. People who have to drive through insanely dangerous areas to get to work. So, sometimes at night, uh, and and who just have to hope for the best now. Uh, you know, it shouldn't surprise me that this is what happened, but for some reason it, it does. It, it, it really did surprise me because I thought, you know, the federal ruling, the federal judge was very clear uh, he, he, uh, in, in his intentions. He, he's, there's got to be, you know, banning gun control or banning, banning carry of firearms is not constitutional. You, can, you cannot 
just ignore the Second Amendment because you feel like it. <clears throat> you have to allow people to bear arms. That's the whole point. It, keeping arms doesn't doesn't help defend yourself. If I can have a gun but I can't use it to defend myself, what is the point? And if I can't have a gun to defend myself, then you're denying me the most effective means to self-defense. And if you do that, you're denying me the right to self-defense. And that, that is patently absurd. It's dangerous. It's, it's, frankly, it's criminal. I, I, these people who blatantly ignore our rights and trample upon them, they should, be, they should face legal consequences, in my opinion. It, it's just, it, it's not right, and it makes me sick. You know, it has it has a direct effect on my life. I, I can't. This gun has been sitting at home every weekday now because I, I travel into the city and I can't bring it with me because of because of the unconstitutional uh, and unethical and immoral laws of the city. You know, I, I don't expect to be attacked every time I go in there. I don't I don't think it's dangerous to work where I work. Uh, but the point is, like, that's it doesn't matter if I expect to be attacked at any moment. Uh, obviously, I don't want to. I wouldn't get myself into a situation where I expected to be attacked. The point is that you can be attacked at at any moment, anywhere. To be honest, like that's just the reality of the situation of of human life, of dealing with other human beings. Unless you're going to block yourself away, you you're at risk. And I would prefer to uh, alleviate some of that risk if, you know, whenever I possibly can, to be prepared for it. <clears throat> you know, I'm not a doomsday prepper. I don't think the world's coming to an end. I don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, there's black helicopters out to get me. But I do know that uh, my girlfriend used to live in a $2,000 a month apartment in Old Town Alexander's is an extremely nice area of the D.C. metro. And we had to report gunshots outside her apartment. We, someone tried to break into her apartment. Um, <clears throat> she had to uh, get her gun and, and tell the, the, uh, whoever was trying to get in that she had a gun. And it was only at that point that he left. The police came, but it wasn't until 15 to 20 minutes later when I had gotten there. Uh, I've had uh, incidents with, with homeless people in the same area uh, where they Got into fights I had to break, that I broke up. Uh, it looked like some sort of weird, I don't know, kidnapping or being forcing someone to go somewhere against their will at the very least. The police, I called the police both times. They only came to one of those events. They, I called 911 for the fight and no one came. They never showed up. They didn't bother to show up. Uh, you know, I wasn't hurt. I, I'm a relatively large guy. Maybe I can handle hold my own in a fight I, I but I, I don't want to risk my life on that fact I don't I certainly couldn't hold my own against someone who's armed in some way or with a knife or pepper spray or a gun themselves yeah which many criminals in DC are and I'm I'm not allowed to be because because of uh, bureaucrats who don't have any respect for for my rights or your rights or anyone's rights they want to run your lives and they want to tell you what they think is, is best, uh, even if in reality it, it puts you in danger. They don't care. They're probably over-oiling my gun a little bit on this rant. <laughs> I need to take the, the oil down a little bit and get the gun all sloppy. It's been a little while. It's probably been a couple hundred rounds since I cleaned this thing, so it's kind of dirty. Um, I just, for one, I love the smell of, of hops number nine. It just smells great. Uh, there's nothing else in the world that smells like gun oil. If you haven't really cleaned a gun before, uh, it's a pretty simple process. But a lot, it's you know, if, if you're new to guns, you didn't grow up around them like me. Uh, you know, I didn't grow up around guns. I didn't. Uh, we didn't have we didn't have guns. Uh, I had friends who had guns from Pennsylvania. There's plenty of guns there. Plenty of hunting. But I was never involved in that, so <clears throat> it can be sort of hard uh, to learn all the stuff you need to know when you're first getting into to shooting uh, and owning guns and to maintaining them. 
And so I guess for me, the, the cleaning is one area. This isn't obviously a tutorial, but I can give you some very basic pointers. Essentially, uh, all the metal parts you want to hit with, with solvent and then hit with oil on all the, throughout the entire gun. Um, you would, in the action itself, the, the part back here, you don't want to get too much oil in there because that can gum up the works basically. So be, be a little careful. <clears throat> but um, when you're pushing the metal rod down the, the barrel with the uh, patch on the end of it, uh, make sure you, you do enough passes to get all the, the grime and, and, and dirt out of there. So you should have a relatively clean patch at the end uh, before you put on, before you put oil in there. So you, you rub it down with, with solvent first and then, you know, get the, all the dirt out as best you can with the solvent and then run through with oil, maybe well, once or twice. You don't want to, you don't want it to be dripping off the gun, but you don't want to, you want to have enough on there. And you can, after you coat it with oil, you can even take some of the excess off with a dry pad. Just some, just some tips. Just stick the whole thing back together. Once you, uh, once it's clean enough and oiled up, well ready to go. Because remember, if especially if you're carrying a gun, you're, you know, you're depending on it for your life, uh, potentially. Uh, not, hopefully that never happens in real life, but it, that's the potential. And so you want it to be as reliable as possible, which means uh, you want it to be clean and oiled and in good operating uh, order. So make sure you take your time to clean everything properly. But everything seems to be in good order. It's not coming apart. Some nice smooth action. Back just fine, everything comes together properly. And now, after you oil and everything, I like to use a silicone cloth, or uh, I actually really like to use um, Rem cloth, which is like Remington's version of this, coated in their oil and stuff, whatever. And I like to go over the whole gun with this cloth, it leaves a nice finish. You don't get fingerprints or anything, and you sort of evenly distribute the oil and get off any excess oil that is on there. That's what I like to do to finish up the gun, but to finish up my rant, uh, basically, I hate DC. It's a terrible place filled with people who have no respect for your rights and simply want to control your life. Uh, and leave you defenseless, uh, in effect. Frankly, uh, there's still some hope that maybe they'll be forced to pass a law that is uh, shall issue, which is what most states are, where they have to give you a permit unless they have a good reason not to, the exact opposite of what they're thinking. Uh, so basically you can get, as long as you pass the background check and the training requirements, you will get a permit in a shall issue state, and that is the vast majority of states. That is uh, far more constitutional. That is actually constitutional, I guess, to say, uh, as opposed to May issue, which is going to go away. California's May issue law was already struck down. Certainly DC's and probably the rest of the Northeast will, they will have all their May issue laws struck down as well, but it'll take time, and in the meantime, law-abiding citizens like me and you will be forced to uh, give up our rights and our ability to defend ourselves. So until that time, we'll just have to pray that we don't get attacked and murdered. Sorry to leave you with, uh, on a sad note, but it's the reality of what's going on. Um, and so now that the gun's all nice and clean and uh, we got the excess oil off, we have a nice, very nice little finish to the gun, it's nice and oiled, it's not dirty, it's all 
the action is working very smoothly. We should, of course, reload the gun. And I like to carry with my safety on. Uh, obviously, your mileage may vary on that point. I like that the shield gives me the option of, of having an external safety. Uh, and I like to take you, uh, advantage of that. But that's that's personal preference. So we get it loaded back up. Let's make sure it's fingers off the trigger. It's pointed in a safe direction, away from any people or dogs that might be in the room, uh, like little Tosca sleeping over there. I'm good to go now, uh, except for the fact that I can't carry NBC. Hopefully, very soon that law will be overturned as well. Almost, almost inevitably will be. So. Until then, why don't you go and enjoy the video of me carrying in DC legally uh, for the extremely short period of time that it, <laughs> that, that was uh, something I was able to do. So um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't before, like this video, share this video. Uh, I get so much homework for you every time you watch one of these things. Uh, go. Go back to the channel, watch watch uh, this week's episode of Games and Guns with uh, my lovely girlfriend, Rachel Ferrado, where we talked about Gamergate and uh, Journalist uh, to change pace a bit. Uh, and hopefully I can do some more of these videos in the future. Uh, on that note, I will be having a fundraising campaign to upgrade the equipment. Uh, I'm using some relatively weak and older equipment for this at the moment. Um, so I'm trying to, to get some community support to, uh, to, to build the show, to, to get it out to more people, to show uh, younger people about guns, about politics, about, uh, and about gaming. So <clears throat> if you support that, please, uh, I'll, I'll have a link in the description once the, the fundraising campaign is up. Please go donate. Uh, please, please share it uh, with your friends. Um, and, and that's about it. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.